Hi there, if you're like me, there's a good chance you grew up going to a local library to borrow books, whether it was in your town or maybe even in your school. This was a great way to read books without having to spend any money of your own. It turns out in today's world, libraries still exist, but they're in a new format. You can actually borrow books in a digital way just like you would by going in person. This is a great way to save money. Instead of buying books, you can just borrow them from your local library. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to borrow library books on your Kindle. I'm first gonna talk about how libraries work and how you borrow books from them. I know it's been a long time for a lot of people, so no worries there if you aren't familiar with that process. And then secondly, I'm gonna show you how to get library books onto your Kindle. I'll show you step-by-step step how to do it. Let's jump into it. Now, the first step in this process is getting a library card. This is like your key to the virtual library of books that exist online. You have to have this card before you can do anything. Now, getting a library card is actually free to do. You don't actually have to pay any money for this, but it does require a bit of research. You may have to go physically into the library to get the card like I did. I couldn't get mine online. Some libraries will let you do that though. So just check the website and see what you have to do. Now, one cool thing to know about library cards is they usually give you access to more than just one library. For example, for me, I got mine in the state of Connecticut, which is my hometown is from there, but I got the library card that gives me access to the whole network across the state, which is really, really handy. I don't have to worry about only having access to one specific library. This gives me access access to the entire Connecticut system of libraries. This will vary depending where you live, but chances are you'll have access to an entire network. And if not, you can actually look into getting multiple library cards. You're not stuck with just one. It's not like your ID where you can only have one ID from one state. You can actually have more than one library card. Again, restrictions apply, but it is possible. The reason why this is important is because each library has its own selection of books. Every library is a bit different. They'll have different number of books. And depending on what you read, you may want to have access to several libraries so you can see where the books that you want to read are located. When it comes to eBooks and borrowing digital books, think of them just like regular physical books. Every book the library has can only be loaned out to one person at a time. Same applies to eBooks. If a library only has one copy of an eBook, they can loan that copy out to one person at a time. However, if they have two or three copies, two or three people can borrow that book, but no more than that. So that's why it's important that you have access to the library that has the books that you want and maybe even multiple libraries. The more libraries you have access to, the higher chance you have of getting the book that you want. In terms of getting books that are not available, what you'd have to do then is place a hold on the book. This will basically alert you when that book is back in stock at the library. It's basically like a wait list for you to know when it's your turn to borrow a book. It's all very old school and it works the same way in the digital world as it does in the real world. One cool thing about ebooks though is if you borrow an ebook at the very end of your library loan, the book will automatically go back to the library, no questions asked. There is no such thing as a book not being returned in an ebook format, which is really cool because the next person can get the book right away right when they expected to. In the physical world, that is not the case. People don't always return books on time, so you don't have that problem when it comes to Kindle eBooks. However, if you are the one checking out an eBook and you don't have enough time to finish it in the loan period that you had, you can renew the book by basically checking it out again, but if there's a hold on the book from somebody else, you won't be able to do that. So all very similar to real libraries in the real world, all those same fundamental principles apply to the digital ebook world as well. Now let me actually show you how to do this on a Kindle. You don't actually borrow books directly on the Kindle. On the Kindle, you can only buy books from the Kindle store. That doesn't mean it's not possible though. You actually have to use a service called Overdrive, which is also known as Libby. Libby is an app that is made by Overdrive and it's the service that we'll be using to actually connect our library card to the virtual library and check out books. Overdrive and Libby are available in several countries around the world. It's something that I encourage you to investigate. It's a really, really great free service. All you need is that library card and you'll have instant access to every book that the library offers on ebook formats. It's really handy. 
definitely a great free way to get books. You can sign up for Libby on the computer or on your smartphone. Either one will work just fine. I actually am very surprised of how beautifully designed this app is. I prefer to sign up on the computer, but afterwards I signed up on my phone as well. When you first log on, it's gonna ask you for your library card. Now you don't have to create an account like you normally would with an email and password. All you need is that library card number. That's why it's so important to get that first before you start doing this. Once you enter your library card number and you're logged into Libby, you're basically set from here. You're instantly gonna see the catalog of books that are available for you to borrow or place a hold on. And you'll see things like audiobooks, magazines, and all the eBooks available. I was honestly surprised to see how many options existed on Libby. It's a really great way to get books for free. But I wanna mention one thing, a lot of the popular books that exist will probably be on hold for you, meaning you'll have to add your name to the wait list. And what Libby will do is show you an estimate of how long that wait will be. Sometimes this will be several weeks, depending on how many people have that book on hold. This is the one downside of using a library. You kind of have to wait for that book to be in stock. But if you aren't in a rush to read something, you can clearly add your name to the wait list over here and you'll have your turn come up eventually. But one thing to know is a lot of books will not be on hold. You can actually borrow books instantly for books especially that have been out for a long time and the initial wave of popularity is over. For example, I was able to get a copy of Sapiens very easily. That book was super popular for a long time. It still is, but a lot of people just have already read it. So I found it very quickly. And you can just press the borrow button and start borrowing and reading that book right away. When you click into a book, you can clearly see how many copies of that book the library has to offer. And this is really important because if a library only has one copy left, you probably want to borrow it quickly before anyone else snags it. At this point, once you have that book borrowed and into your account, you can clearly see a button over here asking if you want to read it on Kindle. You can just press on that. It'll redirect you to the Amazon website through a special link and you can download it to your Kindle directly from Amazon. Now there is a limit to how many books you can borrow through Libby at any one time. Same with how many books you can place a hold on, but chances are you probably won't be doing this much at one time anyway, so you won't be hitting that limit. Just keep that in mind. You don't wanna go on a borrowing spree and borrow every single book. You want to borrow books that you're actually gonna be reading and only placing holds on books that you actually want to read in the near term future. Now, as I mentioned before, at the end of your book loan, the book will automatically be returned back to Libby. And at this point, you can either check it out again if you want and reread the book or continue reading the book if there wasn't enough time, or if there was already a hold by somebody else, you may have to wait for the next person to read before you can get it back. The cool thing about borrowing library books on your Kindle though, is say you do get the book through Libby, you highlight it, you add your notes, and you have all these annotations everywhere, and the book is automatically sent back to Libby at the end. And after that, you decide, hey, I wanna get the book one more time. Whether you borrow it again or buy it directly from the Kindle store, the cool thing is Kindle will automatically show you all those highlights, notes, and annotations you made from the borrowed book. It'll sync them right back onto your Kindle, which is super handy and one very awesome perk of reading library books on a Kindle. I only got my library card very recently. And I'm still learning so much about Libby and how it works. Leave a comment down below if I miss anything important. But one thing I do wanna call out here, if you enjoyed this video about borrowing library books, there's a good chance you may actually enjoy the other video I made about sending blog posts and articles from the web directly to your Kindle as well. That's a great way to read even more stuff on your Kindle and turning your Kindle into a central reading location. Link for that video on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.